Hey GED students, it's GED question of the daytime and I'm super excited about this one because um, it's about as hard as the science test gets. Um, it's one of the few actual like science skills that you actually have to know for the science test that you uh, should work on beforehand. Most of the science test as I've talked to you guys about before is just reading comprehension, graph comprehension, some basic math skills. But this is an actual science skill uh, that you can learn to boost your science score a few points pretty quickly. So let's take a look here. It says, is the chemical equation below balanced? Is it balanced? So chemical equation is balanced if the number of each element well, let me rephrase that. The number of atoms of each element is the same on both sides. So just like a math equation, a science equation has two sides, okay? On this left-hand side here, we're talking about uh, the things that go into your equation. Think of it like a recipe. If you put these two uh, things together here, this plus this, and we'll talk about what the thises are, and you add them together, you have a chemical reaction happen, and then this is what you get out. Um, so uh, the science terms for them are reactants and products, but it, just think of it just like we do in math, like a left-hand side and the right-hand side. Basically, we need the same ingredients that we put into it uh, to be the ingredients that we get out of it. Now, that we mixed in a different way after a chemical equation, we'll see things moving around, but we should have the same number on each side. So the basic skill here is counting atoms. If that's what we have to do to see if we have the same atoms on both sides, you have got to be able to count atoms. Okay, now we have a previous video you can watch on this if you've not seen it before where I did a simpler problem, but building on that knowledge, there's two different kinds of numbers you're going to see. There's these little numbers on the bottom here. Those are subscripts and those subscripts give you the recipe to make a certain molecule. They'll give you the number of atoms in the molecule. Okay, so um, like f for example, you guys are super familiar usually with H2O. We talk about water very frequently as H2O. What does this little, this little H2O mean? It literally is a recipe to make a molecule of water. It says if you'd like to make a molecule of water, take two atoms of hydrogen and an atom of oxygen and you will make a little piece of water, a little molecule of water. Okay, now the number out front, um, the coefficient out front, uh, the big number, the one with his feet on the floor, that one will tell you the number of molecules in the recipe. Like the individual drops of water, how many drops of water are, you could think of it as, I mean, it'd be a really tiny drop, but the number of drops of water if we were talking about H2O. So let's look at a great example, just so we can wrap our minds around this concept before we start this actual problem. So for example, if someone had written for me 3H2O. So we already talked about what H2O, that portion of it means. It means that to make a single molecule of water, I'd have to take um, one atom of oxygen and two atoms of hydrogen. And my water always looks like a little frog face. Okay, so that would be a single molecule of water, but this recipe says that I have three molecules of water. And so they'd all be constructed the same way. Each molecule of water would have those two hydrogen atoms sticking to the one oxygen. Okay, they'd look identical. So now to compute the total atoms in this, that's what we really need to be able to do. Not just the atoms in one molecule, but the atoms in all three molecules. Well, let's think about this. I had these two hydrogen, uh, one, two hydrogen happening one, two, three times. Uh, two atoms, three times. A total of six hydrogen atoms. And I hope that you notice there that all I had to do was multiply the subscript together with the coefficient. And I could see that I have six hydrogen atoms here. 
And then how many oxygen atoms? Well, since each one of them only had one, if there's no number down here, you should assume one. Whenever there's not a number, you should assume that it's one. So this is just one oxygen atom, but it's happening three times. And so I have three total oxygen. Okay. So you can see how to count atoms here. So now let's do it with the particular problem we've been given. Okay, so let's first count the atoms on the left-hand side in the reactants. So the first element that I see is iron. Now, you don't need to know that Fe stands for iron, but I do know that these two letters are one um, element because we just capitalize the first letter of an element. See that one that E is not a capital, that tells me that it's not its own element. So Fe together is an element, okay? Now we can see that each one of the molecules has two atoms of iron, this Fe. However, we know that we have two uh, molecules. So two atoms in each one of the two molecules will give me a total of four atoms. Okay. Now let's look at the next element I see. The next element I see is an O, which stands for oxygen, but again, you don't need to know that. Now again, take a look at the way this O is represented. It also has a subscript that comes after it. So that's three oxygen elements. But look, this is part of this same recipe. See how it's all shoved together like this? And I know that I'm getting two batches of this recipe or two molecules of this formula. And so I'm going to have that three oxygen happening two times. So two times three is six. So I have six atoms of oxygen. Now I see a plus sign. So I'm starting a new ingredient. The next ingredient I have is three carbon. Um, and I can it's carbon molecules, but you can see there's no number right here. So each one of these carbons is... Uh, even though it's a molecule, it's also an atom. There's no number right there. We just assume one. So three uh, times one, or just three single atoms, um, would just be three single atoms. Okay, great. So on this left-hand side of the arrow, um, the elements that went into this chemical reaction, four atoms of iron, six atoms of oxygen, three atoms of carbon. Now let's take a look at the other side. If I get the same elements, same numbers, this thing is balanced. If not, it's not balanced. So let's take a look. First molecule I can see here is just straight iron, Fe. And I can see there's no number down here, so I assume it's just one um, little atom happening four times, so that's a total of four irons. And now looking at this side, I can see that the next thing I have is CO2 molecules, um, carbon dioxide, but we can see, see the two capitals? That's two different elements, carbon and oxygen. Now how many carbon um, atoms are there? There's no number right there, so we're going to assume that its subscript is one. Three times one is just three. And oxygen, I do have a subscript of two, but I have those two atoms of oxygen happening three times. So I'll see, end up with six oxygen. So let's take a look. Four iron, four iron, that's balanced. Six oxygen, six oxygen, that's balanced. Three carbon, three carbon, that's balanced. Is the chemical equation below balanced? Yes, indeed, it sure is. Great. If you have any questions about this or any other GED concept, be sure to drop them in the comments.